In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Magic Speed number four. Welcome to 40 Runs. My name is Chris Ford and I'm a running coach who likes to review running shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm going to be giving you my first run impressions of these, the Magic Speed number four. Okay guys, so welcome along to 40 Runs. Hopefully you've been here before. If you haven't, please do consider subscribing before you carry on with the rest of this video. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the things I've liked, the things I didn't like on my first run in the Magic Speed 4. But before we do all that, we've got to do the stats and features, tell you what's new here because there's been a big overhaul with the shoe, but we also got to do the disclaimer. Right, so with the world's longest disclaimer done, let's move on to what's new here because there's quite a lot in the stats and features. Right, so this Super Trainer from ASICS has received, like I said, a massive overhaul. This is one of those carbon plated, high stacked, sort of faster feeling shoes that you can use for everyday workouts, but also take into race day. Now the previous versions have been a lot lower slung and a lot for sort of, I don't know, back to basics, more traditional feeling than this version. This has had the stack increase and we've got some new foam in here as well. Okay, so this shoe is retailing at 160 pounds. You can get it now at startfitness.co.uk. We've got a flight foam turbo insert into the mid and four foot area. Uh, the shoe has got a 43 and a half mil stack with an eight mil drop. We've also got the mainstay of the midsole is flight foam blast plus, which is what you get on mostly daily trainers currently from ASICS. We've got a full length carbon plate. We've got an ASICS grip outsole and then we've got an engineered mesh upper on the shoe. I'm gonna stick them on the scales now. Let's weigh them in my UK nine and a half. It's 261 grams. Uh, it does feel, um, it does fit true to size-ish. I would say it feels a little bit longer. If you like a snug fit shoe, then you will have to go down half a size. It's okay, it's a UK nine and a half for me. It's okay, but it does feel a little bit long. So shoes this goes up against, I want you to think of the Endorphin Speed 4, the Mizuno Neo Vista, and one shoe that I'm gonna tell you about at the end of the video. Okay, so this is a first run, first impressions only people so take everything with a pinch of salt I just wanted to give you some initial feedback after my first run in the shoe now that run was nine miles in total and I was sort of around about 830 per mile average but I dipped down to below sevens and I was sort of slightly over eight as well so I gave it a reasonable workout in terms of my I don't know paces at the moment I also ran it on multiple surfaces I had it on gravel I had it on um, sort of nice tarmac I had it in roads a little bit of grass as well. So I had a bit of everything on that first run. It wasn't rainy, so I can't comment in terms of how the outside was in the rain, but it was warm, so I can comment on the upper. Okay, right, so like I said, we've got Flight Foam Turbo in the shoe. Now it's a bit naughty, because they put it like massive there. Come on camera. Uh, you can see that there, but actually it's only like an insert. The whole um, rest of the midsole is actually that Flight Foam Blast Plus, which you get in most of your daily trainers at the moment. So it's a little bit naughty, but it's uh, in the sort of toe area to help you as you transition through there, you can see the carbon plate underneath there that runs the full length of the shoe. Now, see what I mean about it running a little bit long? It even looks long, unless I'm looking in the camera. It just looks long, it does feel long. It definitely doesn't feel 43 and whatever mil stack. I know ASICs have changed the way they do their measurements, but it definitely doesn't feel as high as that. The ASIC grip has got decent coverage, uh, and that'll be perfect for the sort of stuff that I'm gonna be doing in it, and I'll come on to that in just a minute. You've got the right amount of foam in the heel, a nice racy tongue, lockdown's fine, and all that kind of stuff. It's built well, it's an ASICS. Now, in terms of how it felt on that first run, I would say it's very firm compared to probably what you're thinking about. The shoe definitely doesn't feel like uh, some of those super trainers that are out there currently. And like I said, I'm referencing the Speed 4 the Mizuno Neo Vista and one other shoe that I'll talk about at the end of the video. It definitely feels a firmer ride. That Fly Foam Blast Plus in the shoe is firm. Now that does break down and you will see um, that compound come to you. It very much reminds me of sort of Light Strike in a way it is a, it, and React as well. It, uh, not in the, in the, the firmness, but in the respect that how much it, it takes um, time to sort of bed in and come towards you because immediately you put them on, it, it, it does feel firm or firmer than you would probably think from a super trainer. And if you're at those lower paces, it's definitely a, a solid ride is probably a better way to describe it. I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable, but it's a solid ride. You're not getting a hell of a lot of feedback at those lower paces. Now, when you do step on it, which is what the shoe's there for, it's a workout shoe. Uh, I wouldn't say you feel the flight phone turbo 
uh, overwhelmingly. I mean, as I said, I was in sort of mid seven per mile. And yes, it felt okay. And it felt like, yeah, it wanted to sort of kick on, but I wouldn't say it was overly uh, propulsive. It wasn't a sort of sensation that I get from some of the other shoes in this super trainer uh, sort of sector. You don't get that feeling, or I didn't get that feeling, sorry, in that um, with this shoe on that run. So yes, the overwhelming sensation is that solid feeling, that sort of lack of propulsion immediately out of the box. I wouldn't say it was the most comfortable thing in the world at that sort of you know, over eight and a half minute miles. Again, this shoe is a workout shoe, so, you know, take that what you may. But it, yeah, it wasn't exactly a, a comfortable ride over that eight and a half minute miles. It just felt solid and it just felt, yeah, almost too firm. Because don't forget, you've got quite a high amount of stack of that Flight Phone Blast Plus. Okay, so in terms of the heel, it's quite narrow. So just watch if you're a bit of a pronator. I would say the foam sort of irons some of that out, being that little bit firm. But I did know it's been a little bit unstable, more sort of when I was just sort of going through, like, I don't know, turning a corner and things like that. I did notice how sort of narrow it is if you look here. And that's more my biomechanics than anything else. It's not a complaint against the shoe, but it's something to be aware of that I noticed on that first run. So look, initial feedback is this. So this shoe will fit in if you've got the Meta Speed and you've got maybe the Super Blast, this is a good workout shoe to have if you like Asics. For me personally, there's another shoe that I prefer and I'll come on to that in just a bit, but that's where it sort of slots in. So if you've got Super Blast or Nova Blast, depends on what you're training for, and then you've got your Meta Speed, your racing shoe, this is a good shoe to have in there and I would recommend if you're building a rotation to have like a Super Trainer in there because it can mop up some of that Goal pace work in the long runs, but also do some of the speed sessions as well, which is where this shoe will be aimed at for me. So this shoe will be used mainly for those sort of tempo workouts, um, those sort of goal paced runs that I've got to do in my marathon training, which I'm doing currently. And that's where the shoe will slot in, although it does have some competition. Now I can't say I immediately fell in love with the Magic Speed 4. Uh, it was just missing something. Now again, that may be because the Flight Phone Blast Plus hasn't um, or isn't that sort of responsive immediately out of the box. So I need to give this shoe the benefit of the doubt. It probably will come towards me. And yes, it definitely felt better at that sort of 7.30 per mile pace, but I just, I am slightly concerned about it uh, in terms of the feedback. It didn't feel overly fast. It didn't feel overly snappy and, and, and enjoyable like some of the other shoes that this goes up against did or do. But here's the thing. When I was running along in this shoe last night, there was one shoe that was in my mind that I was saying, you know what? And I even said it to Sire, si, I wish I was in that. And that's this, the Hyperion Max 2 from Brooks. But you've got to wait for that video. So yes, um, not overwhelmed. Uh, it was okay. I think that's probably the best thing I can say is it was okay. It didn't blow the doors off. I didn't feel like I was a hero on that run. It did okay in terms of the upper and the warmth and things like that. The outside was good whatever, but it was a bit of a, a bit of a nothing experience. It didn't light me up uh, like I get in that Brooks shoe and some of the other shoes that I have. So yes, uh, initial impressions of that first one, hmm, is that it sort of thing. But let's see, again, Fly Phone Blast Plus does have to bed in, does have to come to you a little bit. So let's give this some more miles. We'll get this down the rotation. Obviously we're Berlin Marathon training, so we're coming up, you know, I've got 40 some, 44 miles this week. I've got 50 miles, 50 miles, all chucking at me. So there's plenty of mileage to be done in all these shoes that we run in. So uh, we'll get this back out there. This is now in the rotation. So I will report back and let you know whether this shoe has actually beaten this or does this shoe just absolutely destroy this shoe?